Welcome to the latest edition of the Digital Field Service, a podcast of a short Christian act of worship. And I'm the Reverend Ollie North. In this week's service, we'll be exploring the presentation of Jesus in the Temple, with our thought for the day being provided by the Reverend Richard Smith, Senior Chaplain to 16 Hour Assault Brigade. As with all our digital field services, it is our prayer that this podcast may be to you a blessing in these uncertain times, and that you may know that God is never more than two metres away from you. We begin with a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. We continue with the time of saying sorry to God, a time when we bring before him those things which have not demonstrated our love for him, other people or ourselves, and we seek his forgiveness. If you would like to join in when I say, Lord, save us, please respond. Hear us and help us. Lord, save us. Hear us and help us. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, save us. Hear us and help us. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. Lord, save us. Hear us and help us. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, save us. Hear us and help us. And so we receive assurance of our forgiveness through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. It is titled, Simeon Praises the Lord. The time came for Mary and Joseph to do what the law of Moses says a mother is supposed to do after her baby is born. They took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord, just as the law of the Lord says. Each firstborn baby boy belongs to the Lord. The law of the Lord also says that parents have to offer a sacrifice, giving at least a pair of doves or two young pigeons. So that is what Mary and Joseph did. At this time, a man named Simeon was living in Jerusalem. Simeon was a good man. He loved God and was waiting for God to save the people of Israel. God's Spirit came to him and told him that he would not die until he had seen Christ the Lord. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to do what the law of Moses said should be done for a new baby, the Spirit told Simeon to go into the temple. Simeon took the baby Jesus into his arms and praised God. He said, Lord, I am your servant and now I can die in peace because you have kept your promise to me. With my own eyes, I have seen what you have done to save your people, and foreign nations will also see this. Your mighty power is a light for all nations, and it will bring honour to your people Israel. Jesus' parents were surprised at what Simeon said. Jesus' parents were surprised at what Simeon had said. Then he blessed them and told Mary, This child of yours will cause many people in Israel to fall and others to stand. This child will be like a warning sign. Many people will reject him, and you, Mary, will suffer as though you had been stabbed by a dagger. But all this will show what people are really thinking. The prophet Anna was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. In her youth, she had been married for seven years, but her husband had died. Now she was 84 years old. Night and day she served God in the temple by praying and often going without eating. At that time, Anna came in and praised God. She spoke about the child Jesus to everyone who hoped for Jerusalem to be set free. After Joseph and Mary had done everything that the law of the Lord commands, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. The child Jesus grew. He became strong and wise, and God blessed him. During my training as a Methodist minister, I had the opportunity to visit South India and study the ecumenical church of South India. It is a church that was trying to separate the Western traditions it had inherited from the heart of the faith, which originated obviously in Israel. As part of my studies, I visited a Hindu temple that had been in operation for at least 4,000 years. Elephants, of all things, were roaming the courtyard, and I watched people bathing in the sacred pools as they had done for centuries. Around the edge of the compound were holy men who sat at shrines with 
food offerings and flower garlands and and many coloured powders. This world was both vibrant and a little intimidating. At the time of Jesus, a temple still stood at the heart of Judaism in the heart of Jerusalem. It was not quite the same as the one that I visited in India, but its practices and its fabric were truly ancient. The Bible tells us that Jesus was presented at this temple to fulfil the law of Moses. The law stated that a blood sacrifice of a pair of doves and two young pigeons had to be required. How odd these practices seem to us today and how strange to see the child Jesus in such a a Jewish temple context. Whilst the family were there, um, they met some specific people who'd been waiting for the Messiah. Simeon, a, a righteous and devout man, Anna, an elderly lady who who never left the temple and was known for her fasting and prayer. These and many others had been waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem and the salvation of the whole world. In the baby Jesus, they saw the Holy Spirit and they knew that that day had come. Much still needed to occur But a new way was beginning, not just for the Jews, but for the whole world. For from this young Jewish child, a new hope would be born and new possibilities discovered. And a faith beyond the temple walls would sweep the world and change it forever. We continue with our prayers of intercession. If you would like to join in, when I say Lord in your mercy... Please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Father through Christ who is our light and life. Father, your Christ is acclaimed as the glory of Israel. Look in mercy on your church, sharing his light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Christ in his temple brings judgment on the world. Look in mercy on the nations who long for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Christ, who was rich for our sakes became poor, look in mercy on the needy, suffering with him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you kept faith with Simeon and Anna and showed them the infant king. Give us grace to put all our trust in your promises and the patience to wait for their fulfilment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We draw our prayers together with the words of the Lord's Prayer. So rejoicing in the presence of Christ here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Before we conclude our time together with God's blessing, I'd like to thank the Reverend Richard Smith for his thought for the day. Our Bible reading came from the Contemporary English Version. It is copyright the American Bible Society and available at biblegateway.com. The remainder of our service comes from Common Worship, Services and Prayers for the Church of England, It is copyright the Archbishop's Council and available at churchofengland.org. We hope you can join us for the next edition of the Digital Field Service, which is available every Monday at anchor.fm slash digitalfieldservice. We conclude with God's blessing. May God keep you in all your days. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. May God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.